wanted to welcome you all here and thank you all for coming. This is our uh, sixth edition of the IO 500 list. Um, we've had a lot of changes over the years and things have uh, grown and expanded and uh, things continue to do much better as we uh, get going along here and thankfully you've all had a lot of patience with us this time as we've tried to make another shift in how things work and we'll talk about how that went as we go along here. Uh, the, the biggest thing we wanted to announce is that uh, Andreas Dilger has been uh, made a permanent full member of our committee and um, he's going to be helping us and continue to do the great things he's done with us for the last few months. So this is the agenda we're going to look at. Um, we'll go through it's pretty Did, did Jay's audio just die? I can't hear him anymore. He is well. Oh. Jay, you can look. Yep, yeah. me there. Okay. Apparently, when my screen saved when my phone went out, it turned off the audio. Uh, okay. okay. Comedy of errors this morning for me. So uh, this is our agenda, fairly standard for what we do. We'll have um, the awards and uh, the actual results most of the way through, and then we'll look at some of the things we've been doing and some of the challenges we're trying to deal with internally that we're also looking for your feedback on because we've uh, gotten to a point where we don't quite have good answers for many of these things. So um, your feedback is always welcome. This is a community effort. So with that, I will turn it over to uh, George to tell us about what's been new. Actually, to me, I think according to the agenda. Right. Um, briefly talk about the Virtual Institute um, of I.O. for its current list release and the changes. And uh, this is really a quick overview. What is the Virtual Institute of I.O.? It provides a platform for I.O. enthusiasts for exchanging information. We support training and collaboration in the field of high performance I.O and we track and encourage the deployment of large storage systems. So, oh wait, mm, uh, this is a, yeah. So let me briefly talk about the comprehensive data center list um, because there is some crossover that we try to explore as part of the IO500. So the comprehensive data center list um, tracks system characteristics for sites and supercomputers and storage. It has a very extensible JSON schema and an editor. So you can basically model all the logical components and subcomponents of the supercomputer with the characteristics and values that you have. And it con can contain the values, for example, for uh, any 500 list. So you can model site, supercomputers, um, storage, tape archives, compute nodes, CPU types and whatnot as individual components. So in 2020, the list, a lot of the submitters actually updated their, um, or provided their own supercomputer specification, which is really nice. And you can do from such a list, you can create derived information, such as the capacity group by the country, where we see USA wins here, and capacity group by vendor, for example, which makes some vendors more happy than others. And you can, you have various um, characteristics. Like I said, for example, here we say the list and accept of the list by the system net capacity aggregated in PB byte. So what is relevant is that we have a HTML stub as well. So you can go onto web page, um, create basically the system specification and download this JSON that is the system in a standardized representation. So you can do this. Also, we have an HTML JavaScript, small JavaScript library that you can embed in the web page and then you can visualize your own system. However, you can also use this JSON information, upload it to VI4IO basically and create um, a stub. And then it is publicly shown as I showed you some of these results. You can also uh, click on this um, link here, for instance, to create a new data center storage system and then fill in the basic information. 
And once you have filled it in, you just click Save, and then you can edit it conveniently. So here you see basically the editor. On the left-hand side, we see um, a system, a site in particular, which has here one supercomputer, two networks, and one um, storage system. And you can see that there are a lot of fine-grained aspects here. For the storage system, I can have different nodes. And I can give it a name, of course, these nodes. And I can input all the specifications that I want for a node. You can add sub-schemas, like you can say processor details and so forth. And later, once you, you can click a button here that says recall, you see in this in the luster storage system, and then it computes this aggregated matrix. Oh, the schema is really flexible, and um, the model of this JSON model can be easily extended. There's also a way to draw relations between components, like what is in a network, how are these components connected, and what is uh, um, in the building. It has been used by a couple of people, such as Glenn, for example, to map out interesting aspects. So let me briefly talk about an aspect that we are doing, and you will hear later in the IO500 talk, as well uh, in the, our roadmap, what this goes into. So a potential idea that we are trying to explore is that the user could submit the CDCL schema for an IO500 submission. And then instead of having this generic schema that I showed you here, we talk about a storage system in, gene in generic, you could say, I want to add a luster storage system. And then you will find a schema that is very much specific to LAS. And if you give this schema to your admin, they should easily be able to fill it in. So in that sense, we would have a language that is common to this storage file system as a user or as an admin. In Lustre, OSTs, MDTs, configuration flags that are important could be put in. And then you could have rules defined that automatically compute comparable quantities, but the user that deals with the schema doesn't have to look at those rules. The community or the committee can define those rules and make sure that they generate a comparable set of higher level um, descriptions that are useful, that are intercomparable between different storage systems and file systems. Capacity is an example that is very trivial. And also we can capture production relevant settings, runtime settings, what schema to use um, would basically uh, be, we hope for help for the vendors, and we already initiated some communication with the vendors. And with that, I, I conclude. Really quick overview to VI4IO. You can go to the web page, you know it, because the O500 is there as well. And I hand back to um, George, who talks a bit about what's new. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we're going to talk about what's new on in the IF500 and our mission, mainly the C app analysis. As you all know, we, we have a C application now that will try to move uh, there for more efficient and easy approach to execute IO500. Our mission is just a bit of versioning of IO500 and uh, the student classic competition for 2020. Um, so we do an analysis to compare um, the C application and, and the bus, investigate the difference between the approaches, try to, to observe for any pattern or issue. Sometimes the difference can uh, conclude to some issues and verify the transition to C application does not affect the results, at least significant. And I will show you uh, many slides. I will not explain everything because it's there for you to analyze later, but I compare them uh, relative difference, which basically the formula is uh, uh, 100 times application results minus bus divided by bus, because I take as base the bus results, which means that the results that you will see are negative means that the bus is uh, faster and positive means that the application is faster. And we start with IOR easy. Now you see here the box plots and here you see the same numbers because it's is a symmetry log from a matter plot lib. So what you see here is I are easy, write and read, up first, script first. Up means because we run random uh, the, application, the, the application or the bus, right? So I, we, we separate them to see if this plays an important role. 
And here you see, for example, this is here minus 10 plus some outliers, and at top is 10% difference. Here, though, we have some outliers. That's why I have a log here. It can go up to uh, 1 to 100, for example, percent. So we know that there are some outliers in some cases, but you see that the most results here is the zero, and you can see here the mean values that are around here, the, and here this is minus 1%, right? So in our areas, the average is really good uh, to feel comfortable about this. And then I visualize the results without caring about application or script first. So it's right and read faces only. And you see, for example, the right goes up to 10%. And here we have some outliers, of course, but it's uh, minus 10 plus some outliers. Here, though, in the read, some outliers are significantly higher. Uh, but the main things remain minus 10 to 10%. So this could give us a confidence about what we're doing here. And I continue with IOR hard, for example. So it's similar approach, application first, and then script first. We see here for write and write, right? Just to be careful, they're not the same file systems, right? It's just different submissions, can be different file systems. Uh, so doesn't mean that this can be compared immediately with this. We, we care about the range to see if, if for any reason something behaves worse or better than the other one. So it's not about to compare the, the numbers. Uh, this is better than the other one. No, this is random. So again, we see that there are some outliers, but the main things remain, it's here 10% and here's again the minus 10. We start feeling confident about this. And I will explain later a bit about few outliers. Um, so, and here I are hard. We don't care about the application of the script. And you see that the main one, 10% around here, plus some outliers, minus 10 plus outliers, and here, as you see, it's minus 100. So yes, there are some significant outliers in this case. However, I'll show you later, because you, you use geometric means, the score doesn't mean that we influence crazy by minus 100 or something more, at the total score, I mean. Now, the find, again, I am application script, we found some, some people had crazy outliers up to 500%. You see here the mean is close to the zero, and there is less than 10%. So unfortunately, that's really sensitive at the moment that you run the benchmark. And running two benchmarks, uh, it's different moments. It can be it, if it's a production system, can totally be different results. We understand that, and uh, we have to accept some things that the differences will exist when you run two things uh, different moments. And you see here the fine totally the big outliers, but he has mainly, there's some significant outliers, like 50 or 60%, but here you see the mean is less than 10%, it's like five or 6%. Now I got more complicated, by complicated I mean more results. Empty test easy, right? Again, first application, write, start, delete, write, start, delete. And there you see that this 10%, minus 10%, and the most results are here with, of course, some outliers. So we start feeling confident here, for example, a bit over 0%, the start application first, a bit over zero, for example. And I think you, and we don't care for if application or script, you can see that the main window is minus 10 uh, with 10 and plus the outliers, and we start feeling more and more confident. I have these results here, so you can see them later yourself. Uh, I don't intend to explain everything I think I skipped something um, yourself. Um, empty test hard, for example, here we have right read, start and delete phases, and you see the 10% and the minus 10%, but we have plenty of outliers also. So this is a bit more tricky, but most of the cases are in the range of 10%. I would say the range is 10% because if it's up to 10% plus minus, we feel confident that it's not a significant problem. And you see here, all of these outliers above 100% or something close to minus 100%. As I said, 100% means the bus is faster, plus means that the application is faster. So there's no specific pattern, or your everything is worse or everything is better. So it happens some variation. And when we go to the total score, application first and script first, you see that the, for the score, for application first, 
and the results is the main results like close to minus 20 up to 10 percent of the outlier over 20 and for scripts there are some outliers uh above 20 percent above 40 or, or above minus 60 and but the main ones is close to zero and i will explain something about one to outliers and finally the total score for all the submissions for IAC that had run both i had to compare uh, bus and the application is this one which you can see the range like from plus 10 percent to minus 20 to 22 percent and we have like five outliers so this gives us confidence that the most of the results are quite similar and we could proceed with the transition and in order to investigate more i did this per file system so what you see here see the total score variation per file system and you see last spectrum scale etc and you see many of them are close to zero and around like last spectrum scale Jacob don't have many uh, results here as CFFS has a, a bit outliers here but BGFS has a little significant negative outlier which means the bus is better DAOS is good and the work I owe has uh, um, variation I don't compare here to say to say this is better than the other to show from which file system came the variation this couple has one number only so it should be there but I have it I'd like to show to have also from here some mission so what happened here is that the, I take the BTFS and the work I.O. The work I.O. there was a submission of 6 June that uh, we had the, the MD test option uh, does Y in the read phases, which does sync for all the cases and this can cause um, performance issues. So this doesn't, we don't have it in the application, but only in the bus. And that's why it's positive. The, the application was much better than the bus. In BTFS, so synthesizing and uh, Began helping to find out. We saw in the script of the BGFS uh, these two commands. They try to stripe uh, the IOR hard. There's a difference. FOP is IOR dash hard, not underscore. So the stripe wrong directory that was not used for the actual results, and that's why it led that 90% relative error. So this is something that uh, would change in the C application. We have uh, dash instead of underscore. So we should be careful also uh, if what we strive is the real folder that we use. So we now use the dash consistently in names. Uh, so what I'm showing you is that the, the, the outliers can be explained in many cases, not always. For example, the find is more complicated. I, it's about the system at the moment. And here is a summary of the i5 underscore between application and bus. Okay, and all the metrics how close they are you can see it no need to read it now but you can see that there is some something but they are really really close to feel um, confident about this so this was about the analysis i have even more slides if you wish the uh, offline of course um version inc update uh, this is older but we continue to have it um we were using a tag version previously i uh, now have a hash inside prepare.sh and we noted that um, always in every submission we have a tag like uh, IC20 that IC20 points to the latest version. Uh, so, for example, we have um, IC20 minus uh, four in Git, which the IC20 always points to the last version. The reason is we wanted always the instructions to be the same, not to tell you, oh, download the v4, v3, or whatever version we have. So it's easier for us and for you. Uh, we're looking always for improvement. If you have any suggestion for better version of Fire 500, you are most than uh, welcome. Um, and my next last slide for me is that the uh, i500 is part of the supercomputing classic competition 2020. This year is virtual, so this is a challenge. Uh, I was just informed that they will use Microsoft Azure to do the benchmark. I was curious. Uh, about the achievements with the same between the teams and the rest bullets you, you most of them you know them we have a new role of 30 seconds drop cars option for signal node and as always without 500 or so i was important can create problems and be careful and for vendors always i would say provide hardware to the teams of student classic competition the benchmark is officially integrated and it'd be nice uh, so I don't know, I saw in chat if you have any 
question or could continue to the analysis? Continue the analysis, I suppose. Hey, uh, yeah, th thank you, George. So, hey, everybody, I'm just going to do a, a little bit of some summary. I'm not going to, you know, reveal any of the winners, but I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the submissions that we got. So just a, just a little reminder, as, as we like to do, about the way that the score is, you know, computed. We've got the four IOR phases, and we do the geometric mean to combine those into a bandwidth score. We've got the three MD test easy phases, the four MD test hard phases, just like easy, but because hard has a little bit of data in there, um, you know, which gets written during the create phase. We also do a read of the, those small files. Uh, and then also we do the namespace search, right, which is searching across all of the produced files. And so those eight metadata um, rates are then combined using geometric mean again into a metadata score. And then we take the geometric mean of the bandwidth and the metadata to create the overall score. Um, everyone also just anytime people have questions, please feel free to put them into chat and we'll either, you know, get to them at the end or address them, um, you know, in, in real time if appropriate. So this is just a graph that shows the time, all of the submissions that we've had. Um, we're pretty happy with the submissions. It's going up year over year and uh, list over list. So as you can see, um, we had a little bit, as you can maybe see, I, I apologize, it's pretty small in the inset there. What that shows is, you know, the number of submissions for each list. Um, in the bar graph, we had a bit over 60 submissions this time. So we're collecting more and more data in, in the data set, and we're excited about the possibilities that allows for um, hopefully all of you to start doing some really cool analysis on this data. So here is the top bandwidth that we had, list over list, and you can see actually that we haven't had substantial improvement in bandwidth. The bandwidth per list has been flat. We actually even had a dip down in SC19. We didn't have you know, any super high bandwidth uh, in SC19. So here's the, the scatter plot of all of the bandwidths. And actually this, this high point right there is one that came in right after SC9. So, um, if that had showed up, then we would have had a high bandwidth in SC19, but not in ISC, because other than that, um, we, we did we only had that one high bandwidth across the two lists. Now, metadata, on the other hand, the metadata scores have gone up pretty significantly, list over list. So it's interesting to me, right, that apparently it's um, some of the challenges in the metadata are apparently easier to improve over time than, than maybe some of the bandwidth challenges. Here's the all the scatter plot of all of the metadata. Uh, the find rates, you know, we haven't had consistent improvement in find list over list. It's been pretty variable, as you can see. Here's the scatter for all the finds. Um, here's all of the scores by date. And you can see that the top score by list has actually shown, you know, pretty substantial improvement list over list. And as we look back at that, right, we can see that that's uh, entirely due to the improvement in the metadata since we haven't had improvements of the bandwidth list over list. So because of people's ability to get higher and higher metadata scores, that, that's what's resulted in the higher scores. So these are the total scores. Um, and then finally, what this shows is the increase, uh, you know, from each, the increase in each list, the top score uh, from list to list. So, for example, you know, the top score in ISC 18 was about 125% better than the top score from SC 17. The top score in SC 18 was about 250% the top score of ISC 18. So what this shows is we are, you know, basically doubling or even more than doubling every six months. So I think that we should, you know, as a community, give ourselves a pat on the back that we are helping make file systems better. I think we're pretty excited about that. And thank you all for being part of this journey with us. Okay. Uh, with that, I turn it over to Jay to actually announce who the winners are. Yeah, you got your audio going.
Yep. Um, is it working now? Hello? Yes. yes. Hey, Drew. Okay, good. Well, I've just had so many problems today. There was no talent. All right. So to go through the awards, the, uh, oh, whoops, let me go back. Sorry. So uh, again, just as we've done in the last uh, couple of the lists is that we are going to look at six different awards. We decided to break them out so that we could recognize both on the 10 node challenge and for the all systems lists, both bandwidth metadata and then the combined scores. So we have six different awards that uh, we give out and we'll go through them in that order. So if, for the 10 node challenge list, here's a, a screenshot of the current list. And you can see that uh, Intel came in on top with a bandwidth score for the 10 node challenge of 164 gigabytes per second. So with that, uh, congratulations to Intel. Thank you very much. And uh, all right. Um, next thing that we're going to look at is the metadata performance. And again, Intel with their data system has improved and uh, they are currently looking at uh, uh, three, uh, 3,400, almost 3,500 uh, KIOPS for the 10 node challenge. So again, for Intel, thank you very much and congratulations. So overall, not too surprisingly, considering that they won both of the sub competitions, the Intel system has won yet again for uh, the 10 node challenge with a total score of 758. And if we look back at some of the older lists that um, even though this is only on 10 nodes, that's dramatically higher than uh, some of our early lists. So this is a really a, a huge improvement in performance. Now we understand there's particular architectural and hardware decisions here that have driven some of this as well as the software, but uh, still it's a remarkable achievement. All right, and congratulations again to Intel. So the next ones we go through will be for the, the overall list. And here we have uh, uh, the Oak Forest machine from Japan that uh, wins overall in the bandwidth. They have 581 gigabytes per second. So um, thank you very much to, uh, to the Oak Forest people. So next we look at the metadata performance and uh, much like they did with the 10 node challenge, uh, the Deo system from Intel has uh, uh, taken a, a commanding lead on the full list for the metadata. Uh, in this case, they use 52 nodes instead of the 10 nodes that they use in the 10 node challenge. And um, again, thank you very much to Intel and congratulations. For the bandwidth, um, again, with the 52 nodes, Intel with their Deo system was able to, uh, um, oh, this is the full list. So, um, they were able to get a score that was twice as high as our old winner from last time, as John alluded to. So uh, thank you very much to Intel again. And congratulations. <laughs> So uh, here's a summary overall of what we have for the different pieces. Um, as we can see and, and heard, we saw that Intel really dominated the list here. Uh, I'm sure the, uh, the Optane chips have done a, a tremendous job as well as the software stack, but the, the DDN IME system in Japan has certainly uh, uh, done a good job on the bandwidth front. So um, We'll, we're very curious to see how things are going to evolve over the next six months for our SC list in November. So from that, I'm going to turn it over to, I believe, Andreas, who's going to go through some of the roadmap issues that we have. Hi. Um, so the, uh, you know, as you saw from the previous results, um, the goal is to move 
over to using only the C application uh, for the following lists. Um, you know, we appreciate that that everybody who ran, you know, both um, the C app and the Bash, uh, you know, benchmarks on their systems. I know it, in some cases it was challenging. We worked through a bunch of different issues, and uh, you know, obviously it takes twice as long to run. Um, but uh, that gave us confidence that uh, you know that the the C application is is providing you know a comparable result, which is obviously critical in order to keep the continuity of the results. Um, and the reason for going to the C application was um, you know to be able to directly calculate um, you know the metrics without having to do screen scraping of the output of of IOR and um, to simplify the, the execution of all of the different benchmarks. Um, so for the future lists, that you know will remove a lot of the complexity for users. Um, the other another big thing that's that's been under development is um, there's a new uh, IO500 website and. Um, you know, there's been a, a contributor, Jean Luca, who's been doing an excellent job, um, you know, developing the new version of the website, and it's hosted in GitHub, so that um, you know, if people want to contribute to that or there's issues, uh, you can you can submit issues for the web page or patches if you want um, directly at the the GitHub site, like any other software development. And um, as in the jbez.io500.org is a preview of, of what the, the final site will look like. Um, so if, you know, we'd appreciate if people can go there. I don't think it has the, uh, the, the latest list on it. It only has the SC19 list right now. But, um, you know, you can go there. There's lots of interactive features in terms of, you know, uh, plotting results, um, being able to, you know, compute new derived scores if you want, um, you know, bandwidth per client node or whatever. And um, if you have issues, please file uh, tickets at GitHub. So a big thank you to Jean-Luc um, for his, his work here. Um, let's see. So the, uh, the hardware schema, um, you know, we're trying to collect more information about the um, about the systems involved, and uh, you know, to be able to to do, let's say, comparable, um, you know, analysis of of uh, systems by you know various metrics. The manually filled in forms have been somewhat problematic because sometimes people put in storage devices per per node or sometimes they put in total storage devices and what's the the tunables and things like that and so um what we're trying to do is is get uh, a way to describe you know each storage type uh you know file system type um separately and uh also to have a script to automatically collect as much information as possible so that the submission ca can be op um, populated automatically, right? So we, we collect, you know, OS versions, software, you know, storage software versions, you know, the type of network adapters, CPUs, RAM, you know, as much um, information as possible automatically so that people can make better analysis. Right. There was also something. Did Andreas's audio cut out? I'm. Can you not hear me? I can hear. I I can hear. Okay. Good. Wasn't sure. Um. Yeah. I sometimes have problems. Um. Obviously. Yeah. Price. We can't. You know. Automatically collect the price. Um. But uh, yeah. That would be uh, interesting. Um. You know. But being able to do. You know. A reliable calculation of you know what is your bandwidth per you know nvme device or whatever per server node right those are i think very interesting metrics and you can do that for some of the results but um you know some of them don't have the fields filled in so um 
you know, we're trying to improve the data that's collected. Um, finally, um, you know, we recognize that there was, you know, sort of late breaking um, changes in the submission process to get two of the, uh, you know, two benchmark results, you know, to simplify the transition. And, um, you know, we're going to do better for the SE 20 to try and, and make sure that, um, you know, any changes that are made are made early on and people have a, um, you know, heads up and a long time to be able to submit results. Um, you know, some of the things that we're looking at, um, it's important to know we're not, you know, going to do anything that 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 affects the the current calculation of the score. But um, you know, there have been a bunch of discussions in the Slack channel um, about, you know, can we collect some additional metrics, for instance, to uh, to monitor, um, you know, stragglers during the I/O phases, right? Because of the stone wall to see. Um, you know how imbalanced the 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 file system is, and um, you know or at least the test run. And so, you know, I think it's important when you know you're running a benchmark that the metrics um, reflect something that's important to the users, right? And so, um, you know, in the case of the straggler effect, you know that not only it makes the benchmark take a long time which you know can be annoying but it also impacts how real users interact with the storage right so if if one node is is has completed its io and you know the other ones are you know taking a long time to run you know that impacts the application you know it's needing a longer time to to you know write its checkpoint or its data files and so um you know we want to make sure that metrics that are collected are reflective of important uh, behavior to real world applications. And even though those metrics are not scored, um, they, you know, will still be visible from the submissions. And, um, you know, I think it will, like anything, once you start measuring it, you can start improving it. Right. And so, um, you know, for the, that's one of the items we're looking at. Um, the other one is, um, you know, whether we, you know, have a, a find score that's easy and a hard find, um, because you know, in, during the test runs, there's observation that, you know, if you have a good, you know, MD test hard result, you know, and so you create a large number of files, the um, you know the the find score can be slowed down because now you have to scan through all of those files in a single directory, and so um, you know we're looking at can we add you know uh, 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 shoot it does say find scores yes so um, you know can we add a find easy and a find hard in a manner that doesn't you know affect the the overall result or would they be optional runs that um, you know, run later in the in the test, but don't affect the um, overall score. And so then we can collect those for a few years and see, you know, whether it's worthwhile to to um, move over to those at some point in the future. And then the other thing is, you know, having a bit of background to document the um, why particular phases are the way they are. Why is IOR hard, why is that number important? And why is find important? Right. So we want to provide, you know, a little background for each of the phases on why they are structured the way they are and how they're relevant to real applications. Because, you know, we've seen over the years that that um, you know, there's definitely been um an interest from various um developers to improve their their scores in IO five hundred. Um you know, and so I think it's it's having a, you know a beneficial effect on the community, and it helps users to improve the results. And we want to make sure that improving your IO 500 score ends up you know improving the life of users. Um, 
and um, oh yeah, the one final issue that we had observed during um, some of the the result submissions is that um, MD test uh, Stonewall um, was a little bit inconsistent in that the directory creation time was included in the Stonewall time, but not included in the result. And so, um, you know, we we wanted to to adjust the the Stonewall timing so that it only covers the uh, file creation phase, um, just so that the 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 two times are are consistent. And um, with that, I think we're moving into discussion. Um, I think Julian, maybe yep. I'm not. Sure. No, no, this is Jay. I, right, Jay. I okay. Again. Yep. So uh, thank you, Andreas. Uh, uh, to start with, I wanted to ask, was there any questions about anything that's happened so far? I saw we saw, had a bunch of discussion in the chat about uh, potential additional metrics and such. Is there any other questions And before I get into the general discussion? Give it a second to see if somebody wants to type in the chat. All right, I'm gonna take that as a no. So the first thing we wanna bring up is that um, much like we want to always emphasize is that we are very much trying to be a community driven and a community focused effort. And through that, we wanna make sure that if there's something that you think that can improve what we do and make us a better service to the community, please put in a change request. And here's the process, and this process is also available, as you can see at the URL on the bottom of the screen there. Um, we very much want to get uh, as much community involvement as we can get. Uh, we do get a lot of, of interaction through the Slack channel about what's going on with the different uh, benchmarks and what kind of challenges people are having. But if there's something more significant, such as uh, say you figure out what is the right set of benchmarks and something that is really good for measuring a different kind of workload than we already um, capture currently, then if you could put in a change request for us, we'd love to take it. Um, oh, and uh, Julian just reminded us through the chat that um, he's updated the website and the full list is available for the 10 no challenge and the full list um, on the website. So uh, feel free to peruse at your leisure. So uh, with that, uh, these are the, the issues that we have regarding some fair comparisons that we really wanted to, to talk about a bit. Um, I'll leave these up here. I don't really want to read them to everybody because you can all read them yourselves. But if there's any uh, particular questions or comments on these, so I'll, I'll make some comments about these. I'm waiting for potential comments to either come up through chat or through uh, somebody chiming in. Um, but production versus benchmark only systems or vendor submissions versus customer submissions, um, research file systems versus uh, GA file systems. These, these issues are things that uh, people have asked us about. So for example, do you have to have um, parity turned on the file system for data protection in order for it to qualify or not? Does that make it a production system or a benchmark only system? Um, do, you, uh, do we require that it be in a production mode or can it be in an idle system mode? There's, there's lots of different things. Uh, should a vendor be able to construct a system where they um, put together and uh, end up just demoing what their hardware can do or is it has to be something that's been deployed at a customer site? And um, these are things that we haven't been able to come up with what a, a fair answer is for everybody. So these are things that we'd like some feedback from the community on as well. I know um, like some of the things that have popped up in the chat have been uh, like efficiency metrics, like uh, performance versus power or performance versus cost. And um, we've not figured out a good way to identify these things. So if there's uh, additional information that people might have that um, could help uh, clarify this so that we can add these kinds of metrics in, we would love to see that. So I'll be quiet for a minute and um, let uh, um, anybody chime in who has anything to add on these particular issues.
Okay. Uh, there's a bit of chat going on in the, the chat room, but um, nobody wishes to join verbally, and that's fine. Uh, so the only thing that we have left really for uh, this list is um, any open discussions. Um, again, I wish to thank everybody and for the efforts they put in to try to help run both the C app and the Bash version so that we can try to make this transition to try to make things better and more consistent for everybody. We know that that was a, a big ask and the fact that you all participated and were able to do that for us uh, so that we can try to keep things consistent and better for everybody. We really appreciate that effort on your part. Um, if you have any other issues or questions, um, please bring them up. We'd love to hear from you. If you um, don't wish to open them in an open forum like this, please feel free to send an email to committee at io500.org and uh, we can get things there. Otherwise, um, please chime in.